Hi guys, as you know, today we are not having class. It's a snow day. So let's go over some of the things that we talked about in class last time and then we'll start on some new things. So we were going over protein structure and what we learned was, first of all, is that the cell is structural and functional unit of life. It's also bounded by a differentially permeable membrane and contains genetic material. We also learned that DNA makes RNA makes protein and sometimes RNA also makes DNA. But information can never backflow from the protein back to the RNA. So the question is, why are proteins important and what's so special about them? Well, basically, proteins are the workhorses of the cell. Blood is made up of blood cells, which are made up of protein. Enzymes in our body and in our cells help in various different processes. They also act as cellular messengers, so proteins also act as cellular messengers. So basically, proteins are the workhorses of the cell. They do all the important things for the cell. So why should we study protein structure? Why is it so important? Well, basically, we know from the biochemical point of view that structure dictates function. So if you know the structure of something, it's much easier to predict its function and you can't really understand biological reactions without knowing the structural properties of the participating molecules. Okay, I'm going to skip over this part and go over to the three major types of proteins. So as we discussed last week, there are globular proteins such as hemoglobin and these basically fold up to form a roughly globular or globe-like structure. We have fibrous proteins such as collagen which are in long strands. The third type of proteins are membrane proteins and obviously these proteins are found in the various membrane structures in the cell. So let's talk about the unit of proteins and the unit of proteins is amino acids. So basically uh, amino acids line up in a chain to form a polypeptide and this is called the primary structure of a protein. We'll learn more about the actual structure of amino acids later on but for now just concentrate on how proteins fold up. So, as I mentioned, the primary structure is nothing but the arrangement of the various amino acids in a chain, and we call that the primary structure of the protein. The question is, how do you go from these simple chains to more complex structures? Okay, so we have different structural hierarchies. So we talked about the primary structure, which is just a chain of amino acids. But when you go up another hierarchy, you reach the secondary structure. So when the amino acids in the chain, or basically the chain folds up to form this kind of helical structure called the alpha helix, then that is one kind of secondary structure. Another kind of secondary structure is when the chains fold up like this and this is represented by an arrow and these are called beta strands. Beta strands can also come together to form beta pleated sheets. So basically if you fold up a sheet of paper and you can see the pleats right here then that would resemble a beta pleated sheet and both the alpha helix and the beta strands or the beta sheets are secondary structure conformations. So these alpha helixes and beta sheets are joined together by loops or random coils. 
So the alpha helixes and beta strands are repetitive units, whereas the loops are basically just random or non-repetitive structures. So let's go up one more hierarchy. We've talked about the primary structure of proteins, which is just a chain of amino acids. Secondary structures are alpha helixes and beta sheets or beta sheets. The tertiary structure is basically the arrangement of the secondary structural elements to form a single polypeptide chain. So the tertiary structure is how a single polypeptide chain folds up. Finally, we have the quaternary or the quaternary structure, however way you want to pronounce it. And this is basically when a number of different polypeptide chains come together to form a protein. So here we have hemoglobin and you can see it has one, two, three, four polypeptide chains which come together to form the final quaternary structure. So we started off with primary structure which is just a chain of amino acids. This chain can fold up into alpha helixes and beta sheets and these are joined by loops. In the tertiary structure, when these fold up and it's just one peptide or one polypeptide, then that will form the tertiary structure. Finally, we reach the quaternary structure, which is more than one polypeptide chain folding up to form a protein. And that is your basic protein structure.